First of all, I need to know if you can hear me. I don't know. Okay, first of all, I need to know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Let's see. I, I don't know if I'm using the right microphone. Somebody, somebody tell me real quick if you can hear me. Yes! Thank you, Laura Olson. See? I'm getting better about this tech stuff. Can you hear me really good? Because I have this microphone, but I don't know if it's working. Hello from California. Hello. Hello. Okay. Well, just let me know if it if you can't hear me because I want to do it right. But I don't know what all these gadgets do. And I I just plugged in this microphone, so I guess it's yes, yes, yes. People are saying yes. Comics quote of the week. Oh, well I don't have that. Somebody just said something that just threw me off completely. All right. I don't know if you have any kids around, but you know I was cleaning out closets today. That's what's hilarious about this time. Oh, my hair looks terrible. So I was cleaning out closets today, and I ran across a couple of books that my husband and I wrote together a long, long time ago. And it was kind of sweet, kind of bittersweet, to tell you the truth. I don't know if this light is right. I'm going to look like a ghost here in a minute because it's going to get dark, so I'm trying to hurry. And um, so we wrote a few children's books, and they did pretty good, you know, but we realized my husband was a writer, a great writer. He wrote novels and wonderful books and stories, and truth be told, he helped me write a lot of my books. And so um, the sweet thing is I ran across a couple of books that we wrote that's out of print now, so don't go try to get them unless... If you get lucky, maybe somebody turned them into, you know, eBay or something. But they're wordy. They're a little bit long. They're nothing to do with Easter. I have one children's book called Twinkle. I might do that one later after Easter over. But this one was such one of my favorites. And the, the, uh, I can't take credit for any of the, um, artwork. Oh, isn't that pretty? A, a guy named Matt did all these pictures and they were so good. But before... I read, I'm just going to read the first uh, introduction and the first chapter because it's just uh, the first two chapters because they're wordy, they're fun, and then we'll do it. We'll do the rest of it uh, tomorrow. We'll just keep doing it every day until it's finished, and then you can watch these whenever you want to. So, hello from the SIP. I don't know what that is. Maybe Mississippi. I don't know. It is. It is great from California. Okay, good. So everything's working. So here we go. We're going to read this book called Tales from the Ark. And it's, it's the story of the flood and the ark through the eyes of the animals. And I love that. But before I get started, I have to have a very, very special shout out to some very special kids in my life who are stuck at home. Seattle, my God-given grandson. It's not really my grandson, but he's my God-given grandson. Bone Hampton's son. Seattle, I miss you, and you were supposed to come and get on the bus and stay with us, and then the whole thing got canceled, and I'm so sorry we didn't, but we'll, we'll catch up. We'll see each other soon, so, but he's kind of older for this story, but I still love him anyway, and then, of course, Nessa. Many of you remember Vanessa. I had a chance to be her grandma for the first three or four years of her life, and I haven't seen her in a while, saw her at Christmas. But, you know, as they get older, they get busy, and they live way across town. But I wanted to say hi to Nessa, in case you're watching, Nana loves you. And then, of course, James and Julie Beth. James, I hope you're not being mean to Julie Beth. Be a good guy. You're funny. You're so funny. And Julie Beth, I miss you. And I know that you're probably still a unicorn somewhere. You're collecting unicorns. But I miss you both. Seems like I haven't seen you in forever. But they're like my, my god nephew and niece. They're not really related. No, they, well, they're all, and then, of course, the three very special boys in my life Braxton, Camden, and Aiden Hackett. The Hackett boys. I hope you guys are doing good. I saw you when I did church a couple of weeks ago. Y'all were across the room. But. 
I know you're driving your mother crazy, you and your daddy, who's my pastor. So I wanted to say hi to you guys, and then uh, my true great nephews, John Michael and Jackson. You're probably not watching this, but when you do see it later, I love you both. I don't see you very often, even when this virus isn't going around, but I do love you very much. I have the, your pictures on my piano because that's a very special spot for pictures. So anyway, here we go. Tales from the Ark. See the pictures? They're going to be really good. There's not very many pictures, but I'll show them to you as we go. Written by Shonda and David Pierce. The introduction says, all aboard. Isn't that great? Pairs of all creatures that have the breath of life in them came to Noah and entered the ark. That's Genesis 7, 15. Long, long ago, the greatest animal adventure ever in the history of the world took place in a giant boat known as an ark. Two of every kind of animal obeyed the voice of God and journeyed from the far reaches of the world to find a bed of straw and a dish of water saved especially for them on the ark where they could rest safe and sound and then for 40 days and 40 nights the rain fell and for many days afterward the waters rose so that eventually the whole earth was covered like an ocean can you imagine that we had a big flood here in my town several years ago and it felt like we needed an ark but aboard the ark built by Noah and his son, everything was nice and dry and comfy. Not, it wasn't that comfy. How could it be when you have two of every kind of animal in the whole wide world packed into a room a little bigger than a football field? To be honest, it was dark and dank and damp and loud with a symphony of clucks and squawks and grunts. Sounds a little bit like our quarantine house, doesn't it? There were big furry animals that snorted and slobbered on anything near them, and then there were little wriggly animals that slithered and wiggled on anything close to them. There was fur and hair and scales and skin all over the rough, uneven floors. There was pushing and shoving and and bickering and rolling and swinging and lumbering and gambling and above all gambling that must have been a david pierce word g-a-m-b-o-l-i-n-g not like a vegas thing and above all there were the smells enough said about that for now yet they all survived to eventually leave the ark and spread out finally to have families of their own with lots and lots of little animals to fill the world. But what really happened during that time on the ark? During the time it rained and was tossed about from wave to wave? During the time it stopped raining and just floated about like a duck on a pond? Well, that's what you'll find out in this book. Here for the first time, the animals will tell you their story. Here you will read about the snoring camel the very strong skunk, an ostrich who defends her feathered friends, a ferret who gets lost, and a giraffe who just wants some fresh air, and a dog working, and the turtle doves, the turtle doves who have a dark, scary secret. It was a very small world then. How else could you explain a yak and a porcupine having a conversation? But if the ark was a place where the big and furry bumped up against the light and the feathery, a place where mistakes were made, deeds misunderstood, and near disasters barely avoided, where loose boards were always creaking and toppling, where black goo, what the Bible calls pitch, seemed to be everywhere, where water dripped and birds were always flying about, and, well, you get the picture. And then it was also a place where there were lessons learned, where relationships were mended. And because there was just happened to be a storm going on where God's presence was constant and constantly remembered by all, even in the storm. So hug your pets. You many, 
you many even want to invite oh <laughs> you may i just noticed a, a misprint in this book you may even want to invite your pets under the covers to snuggle tonight or maybe not but definitely grab your umbrella and turn the pages and if at some point the room begins to rock and tilt and sway don't worry just hold on tighter to your covers your umbrella and your pets because what you are about to read are not more simple stories plotted and written merely to help you fall asleep no but rather you are well traveled weathered rustic and waterlogged the tales from the ark i love it and look at the pictures there's the giraffe can you see him Let's see what else. Oh, I've got to go this way. What else did we miss? Look, a ferret. The illustrator was so good. Look, the turtle doves. There's the ark. It's already raining. So has your house been feeling like an ark and everybody's packed in there? I live all by myself with Jack, but sometimes Jack stinks. So, yeah, I feel like I'm on an ark sometimes. Okay, here we go. Chapter 1. This is the first adventure on the ark. Chapter 1. Abraham the polar bear takes a walk, a run, and a ride. Can you imagine a polar bear with all those other animals? I bet he got hot down there sometimes. And a giraffe and the summertime animals that don't have a lot of fur. And then this. I just can't believe it. Okay, here we go. Abraham the polar bear. All around was thick, fluffy, white, and cold snow. And when Abraham the polar bear would make a line of footprints in the fresh white snow, more white would simply fall from the sky and fill the holes under the ground. It was completely smooth. This was the perfect home for a polar bear. We had plenty of fish from the nearby river whenever he got hungry. Plenty of snow, plenty of cold. It was perfect. So why was Abraham thinking about leaving? And of all things, going to a place where there was no snow, but it's because God said, go. Abraham had always listened to God before. Sometimes God would tell him, there are fish in the bend of the river just beyond that tree. Or he would say, you better make yourself nice and cozy because more snow's gonna fall tonight. God always took care of Abraham. So Abraham always tried to obey God. Now it seemed that God wanted him to go to a far off place. Abraham sighed deeply and the cold air whistled through his nose and filled his big chest. He loved this place. He knew obeying God was not going to be easy. Abraham was thinking so hard about obeying God that he didn't even notice that the rock that he tripped over, he slid and he rolled down a giant hill and then he laughed as the snow filled his ears and his nose at the very bottom. He shook off the snow and he thought, whew, okay, I'll go. But it's going to be hard to beat this kind of fun. He took off, he shook off the extra white from his coat and he began to walk to a place where there was no snow. For a long time, Abraham walked until the white turned to green and the cold was gone. He stopped to rest when suddenly he heard, what are you doing here? Look, pretty, pretty little butterflies. Abraham turned his eyes to the top of a high rocky cliff to see a mountain goat. I have somewhere to go, Abraham answered. Where are you going? The goat asked. I'm not sure, Abraham replied. Then how will you know when you get there? The goat asked him. Abraham didn't really have an answer. The mountain goat laughed and said, you silly bear, you'll starve and this heat will kill you. Go home, you silly bear. Abraham tried to shake the words from his head like he would the snow from his coat, 
and he ran away from the mountain goat, not because he was afraid of the goat. He ran because he didn't want to listen to the goat, and maybe he might disobey God. After all, going back to where it was white and fluffy and cold sounded pretty good to him right now. But Abraham ran on until before long he was just a small white spot on a giant sea of green. There's Abraham, now he's out of the snow and now he's all in green grass. And there's that old goat telling him to go back home. Day after day, Abraham walked past colorful trees and flowers, more bright and speckled than a fish's back. Sometimes he'd stop and watch, watch flying, buzzing things that made him dizzy as he zipped from flower to flower. But in all this beauty, Abraham was miserable. The sun was too hot on his heavy white coat. The air was too hot. Even the ground he was walking on was too hot. Oh yes, he was miserable. But still, he walked on. One day, he sat under a giant tree. He remembered all the goat's words. You don't belong here. And underneath the tree in the hot shade, he turned those words over and over in his mind like little pebbles until he saw a large rock walk by. He leaned forward and studied the rock and soon he discovered the rock had four feet and a little head. He guessed what it was. What are you, Abraham said. Well, I'm a turtle, the creature answered. Are you a polar bear? Why, why yes, I am, said Abraham. More excited than he'd been today. You, you mean you've seen others like me? Only just one, the turtle said. She was beautiful and she was very kind. I've seen many strange and wonderful animals recently. What about you? Where are you headed? Abraham sighed and said, I, I don't really know, but I've been going that way. And he pointed. Great, said the turtle, that's where I'm going. You can follow me, but you'll have to keep up, said the turtle. So Abraham followed his new friend. The slower pace felt kind of good because the bear was feeling very, very warm. Before long, Abraham heard voices, lots of them, laughing and talking and shouting. They were the sounds of animals whining and open oinking and clucking and barking and tweeting and hissing. Soon he and the turtle came to an opening in the woods where he saw all kinds of animals alongside a huge wooden thing, higher than any tree around it. This thing was as big as a mountain and it, made from cut, it was made from cut trees, more than Abraham could have ever counted. But the strangest things were those creatures walking around on two legs. Some were carrying straw, others were pounding the sides of this huge wooden thing with stones, while others were spreading a thick black goo along the object's rough wooden belly. A large opening was cut in the side of it and the animals were walking up the ramp that was led into the dark hole. Abraham pointed to one of the beings who had a big bucket of black goo in his hand. What is that? Abraham asked the turtle. Well, those are humans, said the turtle. Sometimes they like to pick you up and pet your nose. Then Abraham noticed that one of the humans, an older man with a long white beard was waving to him and walking his way. He was about to wave back when the human whacked his head against a board. <laughs> then. He kicked over a bucket of the black goo and hopped around on one leg for a bit and Abraham just smiled and suddenly he had a good feeling about those humans. This, this is where I belong, Abraham said. This, this is where, and right then, in the heat of the day, Abraham froze. For suddenly he was face to face with another polar bear and she was beautiful. Look. 
they found each other. Isn't that cute? Julie Beth, I know you love this part. Look, and this is where Abraham was talking to the turtle. He thought it was a rock, but it was a turtle. I love that. My name is Sarah, said the new bear. What's yours? Well, Abraham was a little shy. My, my name is Abraham. You, you, and the turtle laughed. The turtle said you'd think he never saw a polar bear before. Or a motorcycle going by. It's just so pretty tonight. We'll have to do this inside tomorrow. Abraham cleared his throat as he waved an arm in the direction of the ramp and he said to Sarah, shall we? Sarah giggled and walked with Abraham toward the ramp. Looking up and studying his, this huge wooden thing up close, Abraham asked, what is this thing anyway? I heard the man with the white beard call it an ark, said the little white and black animal that didn't smell very good to Abraham. What do you think that was? A skunk. An ark, Abraham said. So what does an ark do? Just then, a pair of gray turtle doves landed on the back of a hippo that was trying to push its way through the crowd. The doves flapped their wings and turned in little circles. One of the doves cleared his throat and said, An ark floats. Abraham just shrugged and smiled at Sarah, and they moved at a turtle's pace closer to the opening. Just before he entered, he took one last look at the side of that huge ark and he believed the thing must surely reach all the way to the clouds. And that's when a single drop of rain hit him on the eye. He thought about what the dove said and said, it floats, he repeated. Oh, and just what's so great about floating? But before anyone could answer, the hippopotamus said, please hurry, please hurry. This is an emergency. And the line pushed forward. Even the turtle moved faster to see what was so important. What do you think's happening? It's going to flood. All right, look. Just like in the ark, when they all piled in there and they couldn't leave for so long, that's exactly what's going on with us, isn't it? There's the ark. We will review. I love these pictures. I wish there were more of them. There's the ark and the rain's coming down. There's a ferret. We're gonna learn his name tomorrow. The turtle doves. And we're gonna talk about the zebra later. And there he is, what's his name? Abraham. And who did he meet on the ark to be his friend? He met, well, the goat was being fussy, wasn't he? He said, go back. And he couldn't go back, why? Because God told him, this is where you have to be. And there he is talking to the turtle. He thought the turtle was a rock. Now that's pretty funny. Abraham and the turtle. And Abraham and Sarah. There was another Abraham and Sarah in the Bible. Humans. You have to get your mom and dad to tell you about that. Cause all these stories of the animals coincide with stuff that happened in the Bible. And tomorrow, chapter two, we are going to say, read about this guy, a yak, Jehoshaphat the yak. I love these stories. Okay, that was the first introduction and the first chapter of Tales from the Ark. John Michael, Jackson, I hope you're being good for your mom and daddy. Nessa, I love you, Seattle. Behave yourself. Stop playing so much video games. Go outside. And Caden, Braxton, and Aiden, please keep sending me funny jokes because y'all are so funny. 
Who else? Oh, I wanted to say hi to Eva Rose. In case you're watching, that's Gary Chapman's little girl. Eva Rose, I hope you're doing good. Can't wait to see you face to face sometime. All right, you guys. Everybody have a good night. Good night, Julie Beth. Good night, James. Be good for your mama.